Hey everyone, today coming at you with another discussion video going over some of the principles of what's called defense in depth and defense in depth strategies and we'll do a little bit of uh, drawing examples just to kind of show some of the concepts and uh, how they can be applicable for you uh, in whatever capacity that you're uh, curious about or needing something as far as uh, some insight into an application for strengthening and target hardening your your home, uh, your homestead, uh, your business, whatever it may be. So one of the key principles in defense in depth, it, it, defense in depth is also called uh, the castle method or the onion method. So that implies layered depth of security. Uh, in this sense, physical security. Uh, aspects. So think a castle. You've got a moat and then you've got your your walls, your fortress walls and towers and stuff and uh, maybe a secondary palisade uh, outside of those walls and then inside the last line of defense is the keep, the armored fortress structure within the castle. So kind of understanding that layer layered system of physical protection aspects and Prior discussion, SEPTED, crime prevention through environmental design in a myriad of different applications factors into this as well because you're doing direct uh, uh, catering, landscaping, manipulation, uh, optimization, and design of your physical environment to enhance and improve and fortify the security of your location, whatever it may be. So this is one of those key strategies that has existed for a long time that applies for physical security aspects and, and defending your home or your business, whatever it may be. So looking at these principles, okay, let's let's take a homestead for example, because I, I saw in some, some recent comments on my on my SEPTED video um, from some, some new viewers, which I appreciate people coming through. Uh, and thank you for subscribing and sticking around and watching these videos. Hopefully you're getting useful things out of this. So my, my intent is to provide some insight and some professionally based experience based knowledge into this as into these aspects. Uh, the, the question was brought up about homesteading and protecting a homestead with a small bit of acreage for that's your farm or garden, things like that. So some of these principles apply and I mentioned some of them kind of in nuance within the SEPTED discussion as well. So you've got, uh, I'm going to do a little drawing here and kind of, we'll do some examples here, okay? So uh, I'm just going to do an initial drawing, let's just say this is, uh, we'll, we'll say that's the home and then I'm going to draw maybe a little bit of a driveway um, out to a road and things like that. Um, and then uh, just, just a little bit of doodling, I'll show you the diagram here. So let's say, you know, maybe you have a small structure back there and let's say you've got, uh, you know, kind of, kind of your hobby farm set up um, and things like that. Okay, so just kind of a, just kind of a rough diagram here. So home, road, or uh, driveway, road, small other structure. Maybe this is some of your crop plot, okay? Maybe this exists on, let's say four acres, okay? Not a big area. Um, but it's big enough to be able to get by with a homestead. Let's just, you know, use that as an example. So you look at that image there, okay? So keep an eye on keep an eye on what that image is here. And uh, so I'll, I'll draw a couple of things as far as applied concepts for crime prevention through environmental design and your defense and death strategies here. Um, so let's say this is in a fairly wooded environment, you know, somewhere maybe in the south or the midwest, you know, something like that. Just as, as an example, I know a lot of people live in those areas. Uh, I live in the in the north midwest, you know, so a lot of trees, uh, a lot of foliage, you know, a lot of opportunities to utilize uh, various aspects of your environment to apply to defensive depth strategies and, and SEPTED. So let's just say, uh, let's do this. So, okay, let's see. So, 
something like that um, because you're gonna have other strategies here okay so and then let's I'm just gonna doodle here okay so you see I've added some 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 markings here okay just just rough markings just example icons and things like that okay so for territorial reinforcement and starting the outer layer of your defense in depth and target hardening your property okay so your roads here okay maybe some influence so put some large downed trees some logs in the roads back that with large rocks um, or other other uh, defensive tools caltrops homemade spike strips whatever again this is an exigent thing and an exigent example um, but this is something that the homesteaders were asking about okay so you're gonna do that on certain at certain points in the road in a relative proximity to your environment but you know space it out a little bit okay so this is not to scale by any sense um, kind of out a little bit to help again territorial reinforcement you're putting a stop there that vehicles even to include possibly tanks and tra uh, tracked vehicles really can't get through or are going to have a lot of a uh, very hard time getting through um, again extreme example you're probably not going to be dealing with that so doing that to for uh, to cut off those bits of road to create yourself a hard point here and I'll and I'll even I'll even do it at the end of the driveway here too um, that but you can move those in case you need to get a vehicle out for emergency purposes and things like that so these triangle indicators here these are going to kind of be like your observation and uh, defense points so outer perimeter uh, observation OPLPs uh, as well as uh, you know maybe partial fighting positions bunkers things like that you know with good fields of view fields of fire things like that possibly some setup uh, right outside the homestead here if you're if you're not going to use the roof of your homestead or whatever as a target hardened point for uh, defensive measures you know and then one down here kind of protecting the back area Obviously, you're going to need to do patrols. You can accomplish that with a small area, say four acres. You can accomplish that easily with three to four, of three to four people, you know, family members or your small mag, whatever it is. Uh, and then, and then this this here, that would be the initial outline of say uh, C wire, barbed wire fencing, something you may already have on the edge of your perimeter of your property. So then you want to bolster that and create a second line of defense in there too, and then start adding some countermeasures. Um, some some noise things you know simple tin tin cans on on, on trip lines um, you know for noise indication uh, if you have uh, flare countermeasures and stuff if you feel like you want to use those things like that you can get those noise things which are shotgun blanks you know for trip trip uh, perimeter defenses you can set those up too again just a myriad of examples to increase that outer perimeter uh, contingency of defensive line and then from there, kind of moving in, no moat here. If you want to dig a moat, dig a moat. You know, that's up to you. That's your call. Otherwise, you're going to have to use other defensive strategies. You're going to need to create other barriers, whether it's using natural vegetation, again, for territorial reinforcement and, and, the, la uh, and the landscaping and manipulation of the physical environment in your property to create more buffers, using logs, using uh, other things if you want to buy hescos and fill those you can do that they are available to purchase you know a number of different things stone whatever it may be um, i like stone quite a bit um, for a good reason it's dense and it stops bullets um, so you know just things like that and then from there the last line of resort is going to be your homestead building and any maybe any outbuildings that you have and things like that and then target hardening those Okay, so layered de defense, layered application strategies for protecting your homestead, protecting your home. Um, with a business, obviously, it's a little bit different unless you own uh, an amount of, of land and property that it makes a perimeter for your business. A lot of people with business, businesses don't have that, though. They're leasing buildings, you know, things like that. So then it has to be just your, uh, your the outer perimeter is the outer layer of the building you know and i've mentioned that before polycarbonate and ballistic glass shatterproof film on glass things like that 
upgrading your locks and your doors, making everything, you know, steel and, and having good, solid sound, multi-layered locking uh, systems and things like that, um, as well as adequate physical security aspects, personnel and otherwise on site and other countermeasures to increase the security of your business. Same goes for your home. I've talked about that before in the SEPTED video. So these are just some of those examples um, and just, just a little bit of a, a little bit of a brief with a, a little bit of a diagram drawing there to help people kind of understand some of the concepts of how to apply layering defense in depth and SEPTED to your homestead, to your home, you know, things like that. Uh, again, with your home, uh, and I said it before, solid core doors, uh, if you can get steel core, solid core doors, that's great. Again, upgrading the protection of your windows and stuff. Um, it, backup, backup power systems, you know, if you can afford those and things like that. Otherwise, having other contingencies too, being able to cook food and heat water and all that stuff in whatever, whatever fashion that you're able to and, and, and have for yourself in, in varied, uh, uh, uh varied resources and and, uh, and uh, systems and things like that um, and just think and just just further target hardening your home a lot of homes in the United States are stick you know stick construction they're wood and sheetrock drywall and stuff you know rounds go through that stuff uh, I don't have a homestead right now but when I do my home even if I buy one that has a pre-existing home on that property I am going to be rebuilding that home out of stone it doesn't burn and it's much more resilient to environmental and human influence uh, disasters and, and antagonistic and negative uh, negative uh, outer outside influences so that's one thing that I plan on doing so you know if you can build your home out of brick and stone and stuff um, or you can reinforce your home in some way with that um, by all means do that uh, there is ballistic drywall out there that's expensive but that's an option too um, you know, things like that, because this outer perimeter obviously is your first and should be one of your strongest lines of defense, obviously. If that gets breached, you have that secondary line of defense, however you have that set up with, with, with physical barriers and, and traps and whatever else, and then your home is your last line of defense. Um, so, turning your home into a castle, it doesn't have to look like a castle, but turning your home into a proverbial castle, <clears throat> uh is something that needs to be heavily considered and assessed. Do assessments on your home, apart from your regional risk and threat assessments. I can do another video on that, about that topic too. But doing some of those assessments and assessing your home and be like, okay, what are some of the weak points in my home? What are, what are some of the, uh, the, the most, uh, the, the easiest points of access uh, to uh, intrude in my home? You know, what are, what are some of the what are some of the uh, uh, disaster and other uh, negative event factors that can factor into my home? You know, flammability factor, fire factors, because that's a big one. It's the biggest threat on boats, but it's also a major threat for homes too. Is fire, um, and I bring I'm going to bring that up a lot, and I bring it up all the time. Um, for my region, you know, f flooding in some areas is an issue. Tornadoes are an issue a little bit. Um, I'm a little bit further north, but we still get tornadoes up here too. Um, so that's another thing to consider. A lot of people in the south have been having some pretty heavy flooding and tornado activity the last couple of years, and that's only going to get worse. So that factor, apart from the human aspect, is something to take into consideration. Um, being able to make your home sound and resi resilient and resistant to those kinds of things as much as the human aspect is really important. So... Understanding, you know, defense strategies and the physical security aspects for your home and everything. I mean, this is super important stuff, and hopefully this helps some people, and, and these examples are, are useful, and it gives you some ideas. It gets you doing some critical thinking, um, because there's a lot of things here that you need to do to really make sure that you're preparing adequately to defend your property, defend your home, your family, uh, and friends, and everything like that, as well as to be able to withstand the natural environment around you um, because that's a big one we deal with natural disasters all the time um, almost on a daily basis in some form or fashion uh, and that's that's aside from again the human aspect and, and industrial disasters if you're near uh, industrial sites and stuff too so again there's some risk assessment you know kind of strategies and stuff but that's 
some of the basic information here. I'll put this up again, you know, just kind of understanding some things and just figuring out, hey, this is what's going to work. This isn't what, it, it, this isn't going to work for what I need, you know, to whatever degree that is and like all that stuff. Um, layered method, okay, at least three layers with the, the, the most internal layer being your Alamo, your target hardened position, uh, implementing patrols, doing your risk assessments, things like that. That all contributes to being able to uh, implement an effective defense and death strategy. So that's what I'm getting at here with this stuff. So hopefully this makes sense to people. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments. Please articulate your questions in good fashion. Um, uh, I appreciate well thought out questions much more than just some very vague question or comment that doesn't really have any application and I can't really discern anything from it. I want to give you a well informed and contextually appropriate answer. So um, that's about it for this one. So hopefully this helps some people and more of these videos coming soon. All right. Metal up. Out.